this is why I love living in the tropics, or at least on the edge of the tropics, is we get to grow food all year long. So while so many people up north are just dreaming about getting back into their spring and summer gardens, we're like still going, right? So I'm really excited because I'm gonna be taking you all through what I've been harvesting and oh, a couple of things that I'm doing this year to kind of bring in more pollinators, get some more bees and butterflies in so that I can really up the amount of fruit and vegetables that I'm getting in this area. So come on. Okay, so I'm excited to show you what's been happening here in the, in the, in the, in the beds. Oh my gosh, so much has been happening. So if you remember the lettuce, look at how much it's taking off. So we have romaine lettuce and we've got butter crunch, um, romaine this side, butter crunch. I will tell you the germination rate on my butter crunch has been so much better than my romaine, but I'm not mad at either because wow, just look at this. Now you're probably thinking like, why does it not look like you have individual heads, especially on this butter crunch? Well, what I've been doing is, is I've been letting them kind of take off and then I thin them. Um, so just a, like, what was it, maybe a few weeks ago, I went and I thinned out both these sides. I thinned out a lot. And I think we got about 10 ounces of lettuce, which if you know anything about lettuce, 10 ounces is a huge amount. So this has been really cool because this is one of the reasons that it's okay sometimes to over germinate a plant, like maybe not your peppers or tomatoes where you don't want them growing in on each other, but like a lettuce, when you go to thin it, it's not a waste, you still eat the plant. So you can see areas where there wasn't as many around. You can see what they could have been in size. So this is a butter crunch near a pepper. And look how big that is. It's huge. It's doing really well. It's really close to that pepper and I really don't like it there, but honestly, we've been in the cold months. So I knew the pepper wasn't really gonna be growing fast. Cold months, okay, I know, I know. But for Florida, we were hitting some days in the 40s and a little bit of dipping into the 30s. So I just kind of let my cold weather crops like lettuces keep going um, because I really wanted to make sure I could get the most amount of yields knowing that I may or may not lose the peppers, which did not. And even with those really cool days, look what we got going already. I mean, it's January. What are we talking about? Peppers, peppers, oh, peppers, and then <laughs> peppers. And if you all remember, these ones are those types that you can just buy from the store that have the, the decomposing pots, which was pretty cool. I really like that. Um, I was just trying them out because I got a gift card for my birthday and hey, not going to waste. Could buy something else, but why not buy plants? The garlic bed, the garlic's doing fine. I've never done garlic before. And if you remember, these are the beds that I put soil down, but not enough, but they seem to be doing okay. Again, like I've never grown garlic, so I'm not really sure how they should be going. If you know and you want to give me tips and facts, love it. Um, here are all the onions from the onion scraps. And you can see I've got, again, multi-heads coming out, which is very exciting. Even if they don't make onions, I am okay with that. <laughs> Though I think I'm going to get some. We'll see. And then there's also still some pepper plants here in the middle that were looking very sad for a while. But now we're starting to again to take off. We're getting a little bit warmer, plus I think some of the nutrition from the soils just helps, plus the soil below is broken down. And you can see some like right here, hiding amidst the lettuce. So as I go and I thin this out again, which I'm gonna have to do a whole nother round of thinning this out, um, yeah, I think I'll just open up space for peppers. And now I've gotta decide, because we're going into warm weather crops again. Oh yeah, yeah, it just feels like does anyone else feel like this? Like you just are getting one thing going and then it's like, oh my gosh, it's time for the next thing.
So in the back side of that middle bed, we still have our eggplants. The eggplants are growing a lot. And you see as the weather's warmed up, all those leaves that we saw last time were looking very stressed, really aren't anymore. They're looking very happy. I'm getting a lot of flowers, but no eggplants. I've been looking, but no eggplants. So I'm gonna try helping that out by increasing pollinators in the area, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but they're growing a lot, so much so that I had to prune off you can see some whole big branches right there because they were just getting in the walkway. So next up, I've got the broccoli and green onion bed, potentially a cauliflower or two, but pretty much looks like it's all broccoli. But look, oh my gosh, I'm getting my first heads of broccoli. I have never gotten broccoli before. This is my first real big year of doing broccoli. So I'm really excited. These are going great. I think all of them have florets on them now. I also just harvested, I think was it, seven ounces of broccoli leaves for us to use either in salads or a stew or stir fry. So you can see all these bluish ones, these were ones that came from transplants that were on sale at the end of the season. I use my quotes for Florida, there is no end of a season. Um, it was still, we were still in prime cold weather crops like broccoli time, so I was really excited. These are the ones that I started from seed, which again, I don't remember if this is a cauliflower or a broccoli because I had a mix of them. Don't mind the tag, that's for this. So this is a broccoli lieutenant transplant from Lowe's. But these were just from seed packet and I don't, I don't remember what they are. And then I've already harvested the green onions in here once. They're getting pretty shaded out now, which is fine. They seem like they're fine. Some of them are poking back through. <laughs> Hi, green onions. I think that's really cool, right? I'm excited, even if I just get a lot of leaves, but I'm like, I'm so excited. And what I'll tell you what I'm learning about broccoli is once those heads come in, they seem to really grow very fast because this was only just probably half the size a week ago and it's just really, really taking off. So who knows, maybe within the next few weeks I'll have bro a lot of broccoli. Oh my God, I might have a lot of broccoli. What am I gonna do with this much broccoli? I know, I'll freeze it, it'll be fine. <laughs> So next we're gonna move over to our sweet potato beds. They are looking so sad at the moment for two reasons. One, we've had a lot of cold snaps and sweet potatoes are a tropical plant and they really don't like getting cold. So you can see a lot of leaf death here. No happy, not happy, not happy, but that's okay. I mean, honestly, as soon as it warmed up, look at this. You've got new growth coming in all over the place, which honestly, this is the growth that I like for using for our smoothies and stuff like that. Um, so we've been doing sweet potato harvest, lots of sweet potato, I'm sorry, sweet potato leaf harvest. We usually get about five ounces a week is what we need for our family. Um, so I've been doing a lot of that. And even though the main plant over here was looking stressed out, I'll show you over here, these new ones, even though it got really cold because I was keeping them kind of in their baby state, they actually didn't get too stressed out. That plus the radiant heat from the house probably helped. Um, but honestly, they did pretty good. So I've been doing sweet potato leaf harvest. Also did some sweet potato harvest in this area. I didn't do a full pull it, the garden apart like I've normally done. Um, I just kind of picked through it because I didn't think, I just kind of looked for ones. I didn't want to pull all this up because I didn't want to reset the mulch on it like I normally do, so I just kind of let it be. You probably are noticing we've got sunflowers coming in so they are getting pretty big I think that's like a foot and a half tall now so we've got a couple around you can see and I've planted some more seeds this last weekend so we'll see if we get more up um, also in the garden we still of course always have our green onions on either side I'm probably gonna let them bolt a bit so I can do some seed collection and this will be the right time of year if you do have green onions in your yard um, as you get into the spring months, they're more likely to bolt and get a lot, a lot of seeds. And I'm going to tell you, we mentioned the pollinators, they love, 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 love alliums, which your green onions are a type of allium. And those flowers, I swear, they went right past my natives, like my fire bush, and they were all about those green onion flowers.
So when it comes to the cattle panel trellises, I have not done much. Um, I think I talked about this last time. I really haven't done anything to reset these. So these are just beans that just started to take off. They took off and there are beans all over it. I don't know why these ones, maybe because of the southern exposure, but they just started putting out a lot of beans and getting a lot of growth. So I'm very excited for that. Um, but I will be resetting these panels in probably in the next few weeks as we're getting ready to head into spring and I wanna get a lot of tomatoes on there, probably reset the beans too. I'll use some of the beans that are so sad. Look at these ones, they're so sad. But you know what the good thing is? Is that even the really, really sad because of the poor fertilization, the fertility of the soil. I still did get pods, so I'm just gonna take these and I'll use these, um, dry them out, and I'm just gonna replant them. So I'll take some of those seeds, beans, seeds, and replant this area. So my idea is, is I'm gonna do a lot of beans, a lot of tomatoes, and maybe a little bit of squash because we don't use a ton of it. All right, from the sweet potato bed, let's talk about how are we increasing yields for spring? How are we gonna get more tomatoes? How are we gonna get more peppers? How are we gonna get more of just a lot of the vegetables that we love to grow? And it's all coming down to increasing the pollinators. And I'm gonna start first with, I added these pots. Um, these are self-watering, well, self-watering pots, right? Um, and I moved the Biden's Alba. So this used to be in my native plant garden, but honestly, the space, it's just, these were more in the way than <laughs> they were helpful for the area. I've already got a lot of wonderful pollinator friendly plants over there that are native, um, but the pots just honestly were just making it difficult to move garden equipment in and out of the area. So I thought, hey, where else could I put them? And of course the logical thing is put them in the vegetable garden because when it comes to winter time, a lot of things aren't blooming, right? A lot of plants are saving their energy. They are trying to make sure that they can make it through the winter so that they can come and put a lot of put a lot of flowers and berries and things out come late winter to spring, but not Biden's Alba. Biden's Alba, I mean, gosh, in this area, I've been seeing it all over the medians. It's like its own Florida snow, these little white flowers all over the place. Now it is usually considered a weed and it can get everywhere and it's become very difficult to control, which is why I keep it in a pot. Contain it, contain the beauty, contain the good things. But it is one of the few flowers that is blooming throughout the entire winter. So for the bees and the butterflies that don't go and um, move south or they go into some sort of hibernating state, this becomes really, really important source of pollen and nectar for them. So I've added and I've moved this Biden's Alba over here. And then I took the other one, which has got some young Biden's Alba in it, which are literally just seeds from the other one. It's honestly so easy to propagate. It's ridiculous. Um, it's actually, that's why it's difficult to control. So basically this then puts two pollinator really friendly plants at the north side and plus there's other flowers all around. The next thing I did to help pull in more pollinators is going to be I added these hanging baskets to the trellises so you can see there's another one right there and this has got pine land lantana and for those who love pollinators who love butterfly gardens pine land lantana absolute must absolute must you should be thinking about adding this. Now make sure you don't buy the invasive types of lantana, which are what are easier to buy. I've got a whole series on it, um, so go check it out. But I was trying to also bring in more because as I can have um, tomatoes and beans and lots of things that would love to have some pollinator help, I thought, oh, why not just hang something to kind of get them into the tunnel, right? Because my hope is, is come spring, these trellises are covered with vines. So I wanted to get something to bring them in and then the next thing I'm doing, I mean, of course we've got sunflowers. Of course we've got firebush, the favorite of Florida native plants. And of course I've got the green onions that are gonna start sprouting. So we'll get those beautiful alliums that the bees just can't, they cannot resist. But the next thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm installing a whole butterfly garden right here. So I had invasive lantana here. I had the non-native penta. I've ripped those out. The only thing that I left behind that was still alive from when this was a mini butterfly garden before is our native sunshine mimosa, which was really being shrouded out. But this whole area is gonna get a total makeover with more native plants. I'm very excited. Because who doesn't love shopping for plants? Me. Me, me, me. I mean, I love doing it. Not that I don't love it. You get what I mean. And 
last but not least in our tropical section, again, the bananas are being bananas. They're gonna take their time. We've got our flower down below. You know, I keep thinking about it as I should have harvested that so we could use it as a cabbage substitute because you can for the big female flower. Go and harvest it. The male flowers, which are this part right here, um, you don't do anything with it. You just take them off. But it's just gonna take some time for this to fully ripen up. I've got probably, let's see, what we guess? Three to four months left on that bunch before it's ready to harvest. But you know who's been starting to be ready to harvest? What? Papaya time. So I harvested my first papaya. I think it was two pounds, which was very exciting. And they are coming in and they're starting to come in fast because we're starting to have days that are hitting 70 degrees. And papayas love the tropical weather. Oh. Time to harvest our first papaya. Any others? Oh, you're getting close. This is exciting. Oh my gosh, there's so much to do. And if you haven't started ordering your seeds yet and you're not thinking about your warm vegetable crops, like get on it, oh my goodness. And if you need help keeping all the seasons in order, because I know here in Florida, it's just a little different, go ahead and check out www.wildfloridian.net slash calendar. I've got a free calendar there to help keep you on track of kind of our Florida seasons instead of what you kind of hear for all the rest of the country. So if you live in the subtropics, you live here in Florida, go ahead and check out www.wildfloridian.net slash calendar for your free calendar. I'll link it down in the comments and in the description down below. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.